well, we just chatted a bit about moving the uh, ice fishing stuff into the garage, getting organized, getting things stored up. So now that we're kind of in that transition mode and really moving on to the other side of things where we're actually going to start to open water fish, uh, believe it or not, pretty darn quick. Uh, there are some areas with moving water opening up where you're seeing anglers getting out and doing some fishing. Uh, there's going to be some dam areas that might have some opportunity to catch some fish. And then in the coming weeks, rest assured, we're going to be open water fishing, whether it be shorelines that open up, bays that open up, and even starting to dump our boats, canoes, kayaks uh, in the water to chase down some panfish here in Minnesota. Because the game fish season, as we know, is now closed. Uh, you can't uh, target bass, uh, walleyes, uh, northern pike, uh, you know, amongst other species. But we can t continue to target bluegills and crappies and perch and rough fish and catfish, but we're going to target uh, mostly crappies and bluegills here now that we can get out in the open water, hopefully in the next couple weeks. And I wanted to touch on how I'm going to start my season. You know, we oftentimes talk about uh, cool water period, whether it's uh, leading up into the ice season or really coming off the ice season in the open water season and how that affects the fish. And I'm going to talk about some of my approaches to how I target these crappies and bluegills right away during open water and, and you know some of this stuff should be common sense but I think it oftentimes gets overlooked and we just don't maybe think as as clearly as we should uh, coming off of an ice fishing season because we get excited about open water everything seems to be bigger longer rods heavier pound test line yada 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 but I'm going to encourage you to not make that giant step yet still think ice fishing get in ice mode the first couple weeks of open water and you'll catch a lot more fish and let me show you what I'm talking about so for starters, I'm not putting away any of my ice fishing jigs. I got all my boxes of tungsten, my drop kicks, my drop jigs, my caviar drops, my snow drops. These are all getting used right away during open water season. We just got done fishing bluegills and crappies with size 12 tungsten jigs, size 14 tungsten jigs. Maybe you got away with a 10 or maybe you used an 8 for some aggressive under the ice you know, fly by the seat of your pants crappies and continue to use those presentations the first couple weeks of open water. And uh, with that, I'm using that same stuff. I'm using my Mackie plastics. I got my bags of plastics with me. I got, like I said, my tungsten jigs. I might even, believe it or not, drop a pinhead minnow down there. If I'm vertically jigging over the side of the boat, if I'm fishing weed line crappies or schooling crappies still that are on the basins right away in the boat, for sure use a jig and spoon. We don't need to put that stuff away and not use it all summer long. It, they can catch a pile of fish quickly and effectively, especially in colder and windier conditions. I can continue to fish that 16th ounce pinhead minnow over the side of the boat pretty effectively, just like you can ice fishing. They'll come up there and take that, and you can fish that more effectively with a pair of gloves. I can wear a pair of gloves if it's cooler out. I'm not finessing them like I do, so you can get after them and aggressively fish these crappies open water as well with a jig and spoon with a small teak amount so you can use a lot of your ice fishing applications out on the boat and i would encourage you to do that show you a couple things i'm fishing uh for starters continue to use that three pound test line maybe four because you might be fishing around some cover uh, but i continue to generally use three pound test line right away after after ice out so i might have four or five pound test line on my rod but i'm going to put a three four foot section of three pound test line in the end uh, which ties off to the jig just to give it a little more action down there look a little more natural and then just help with some of these fish catches you're also dealing with very clear water here right away in the spring the weeds haven't started to bloom quite yet you're not getting the algae you're not getting that change in water color you're still de dealing with pretty clear conditions out there so i'm going to use a three pound test leader on this you can't see my knot but i'm going to use a three pound test leader on this three four foot section on the front uh, that ties off to yes you got it this is number 12 glow red white spot wonder bread drop kick jig this is a tungsten drop kick jig the same jig i was just using like i said ice fishing to catch crappies just last week i got tied on my rod here i got a seven foot me ultra a seven foot light action ultra light action whatever one you have uh long rod here and i'm using just a 1000 series shimano stratic ci4 uh, so many options out there that work exceptionally well for catching panfish but that will be one of my go-to setups and then what i'll do to start the season is i'll take a very light balsa float 
and uh, I can put this on the line. I can adjust it wherever I want. I'm not using a slip bobber. Generally speaking, uh, you can without a doubt, but I'm generally not. I'm looking for the warmest water I can. I'm fishing uh, northern bays and cuts and inlets and stuff that have seen you know, a, a degree or two change in water temperature, and that's where those fish like to go. These fish in the spring are gonna find the warmest water they can. They're gonna migrate to the warmest part of the lake. And generally speaking, that's up against the bank, that's, you know, on a dirty bottom, maybe around uh, some type of cover, silt, anything that can bring in some of that warmer water is where these fish are gonna be. So I'm fishing a bob or something that I can see as a strike indicator, because I'm fishing really slow. You're fishing that bait really slow. I'm not casting and reeling in twister tails and beetle spins and inline spinners and road runners yet. I'm not quite there. We're a few weeks away for that. So I'm gonna finesse fish that small tungsten jig. I'm gonna put that bobber, depends on how deep I'm fishing, anywhere three, four feet up, and I'm gonna slowly put that bait in the strike zone. I'm gonna work it really slow. Just like you're finesse fishing that Mackie plastic through the ice, I'm gonna fish it the same way, open water fishing. So. Like I said, don't negate these same tactics we used to catch fish in the ice just a week or two ago. Use those same tactics open water as well. And another option is going to be a hair jig. I'll use a small 164th ounce or a 32nd ounce, but generally 164th ounce hair jig. I'm using just a small little imita imitating hair, minnow imitating hair jig that falls nice and slow. The fish can suck it in. And again, I'm fishing... I don't know if you can see that mini stealth. I got two split shot there to hold it in place. That helps me with castability. It adds some weight. Also keeps that bobber down in the water or uh, uh, down in the surface. So it doesn't take much to pull it down. I don't want to put too much weight on there so that the bobber sinks, but I want just enough. I don't want to put any weight between that bobber and this jig. You'll see there's no split shot on that line. I don't want that. I want this to fall and pendulum nice and slow and let just the natural current under the water move this feather jig this little hair jig and fish can come and suck it in i'll put the weight you can see that up there by the bobber i'll put the weights up there to hold that bobber in place that gives me the cast ability that gives me the ability to keep this float down so the wind doesn't abuse it but i'm not putting the weight down here by the lure i got lots of option down here for this lure to move naturally so a fish can suck it in and again i'm using the same type of setup this is just a custom built rod from thorn brothers this is just a seven foot a light action rod this one will get the job done for about any situation and again i got a 500 series or a thousand series shimano on there with three or four pound test monofilament on the end of that so those are my two one two punch setups right now now another thing i want to show you which a lot of anglers laugh at but i'm telling you what if you've done this you're not laughing you're smiling because you're catching fish i keep my longer ice rods in the boat with me this is a 36 inch jason mitchell meat stick I'm still got the three and four pound test line on this. I'm fishing this over the side of the boat if I can. So a lot of times I'm controlled over the side of the boat. Why wouldn't a bluegill or a crappie take that tungsten jig vertically over the side of the boat any different than they did just a couple weeks back through the ice? Well, they will. That's the whole nature of the game. They will take that bait the exact way they did a couple weeks ago when you're ice fishing. So I can sit over the side of the boat. I can have all the control in the world working this 36 inch meat stick they also make a 40 and a 48 inch meat stick now so you can have a longer rod but i got 36s because i use them ice fishing and i got my micro reels on here i got my frost ice line this is the same setup i was perch fishing with in march same setup i was using crappies for march now i can vertically fish over the side of the boat i can fish my pinhead with this i can fish my tungsten jigs and you got that light tip that the meat stick's known for for detecting those light bites. So you can easily fish over the side of the boat. I can get two, three kids in the boat with me. We're not casting, we're not doing anything. You watch your electronics, you look for those fish, and you fish them over the side of the boat. Now this might not be the best application for shallow water. So I'm back in a, in a cut or an inlet, or let's say a shallow bay or a boat dock. You're probably gonna wanna fish a float, get up next to that structure and slowly fish. But a lot of times right away, right when the ice comes out, those fish are still schooled up on the basin, on weed lines, you're in 12, 15 feet of water, even 25, 30 feet of water when those crappies are schooling up. You just got done catching them up, like I said, ice fishing out there. I can drop, drop that pinhead down and work that bait just like I would ice fishing or a tungsten in a Mackie minnow or a Mackie plastic, just like I would and I'm watching that rod tip, just like you're ice fishing and they come up just like you see, boop, they bite it, set the hook. So don't throw away the ice fishing rods. Don't store them quite yet. Keep a couple of your go-to ice fishing rod setups 
to use over the side of the boat. And I also keep those out all summer for the kids when we're dock fishing, when we're fishing bluegills in the weeds. Ice fishing rods have a place in the boat, in my opinion, all year long. I think you can catch crappies and bluegills in the weeds with them. You can, you can walk around docks and drop it right over the dock versus using a long rod and trying to do this. You can just take this and drop that bait right over the edge of the dock and work a fish under the dock. So my kids are always using ice fishing rods all summer long. So like I had key tips, you know, don't put away the ice fishing stuff. Bring out your ice jigs, grab your box of Mackie plastics, you know, be prepared to use the ice fishing gear to catch some fish open water, tungsten jigs, small floats, fish slow, you know, light lines. So don't put on the five and six pound test line yet. We're not quite there. Keep the light lines out. Maybe bring an ice fishing rod with you. Try it if you haven't. I think you'll make a believer out of you. And you're really going to slow down the way you fish. And again, temperature driven fish in the spring, find the warmest water you can. Pay attention to electronics and get out there and have some fun and dress warm. Warm, warm clothes is everything. Just like on the ice, it can feel colder here the first few weeks of open water because you get that wind off that cool water. Water's in the 40 degrees. You're still talking low 40s when that ice comes off. It's cold. You do not want to play around in that water. So that wind's coming off the water. It hits you. It's cold. I'm wearing my blackfish stuff. I'm wearing my soft shell bibs. I'm wearing my air gloves. I'm keeping my hands warm. I'm wearing my stocking cap. I might even have my neck gaiter on from when I was ice fishing. I might have my neck gaiter on, all that sort of stuff to keep yourself warm, comfortable, and dry. So that's what I'm going to do here to start my bluegill and crappie fishing here right away at open water. Get out there and chase some fish, hopefully have some success, and then we continue to progress into more aggressive tactics as we move into April, as we look closer to, you know, the crappie spawn towards the end of April, early May, and we start getting all that fun time of year. But this time of year, you're still fishing slow. You're still thinking ice fishing mentality to get your fish and to put fish in the boat. So get out there, have some fun, have a great spring, and we'll definitely catch you later.